right, and welcome, welcome to the Real Estate 360 Show. My name is Jason Miles. And I am Steve Connolly. Welcome, Steve. It's good to see you again today. Welcome, yeah. And man. thank you all for listening. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for those that are watching. Uh, listen, we get a lot of questions about, especially from the new investors, about, you know, valuation, because valuation isn't just valuing what the property could be worth. Part of evaluating the property for what it is now and putting in effective offers, the biggest thing that I found is understanding what the cost to renovate this property is. Right. And, so, and, you know, there are four questions that these investors typically ask us, and that's where do you find the properties? How do you get the money to buy them? How do you determine what it's going to cost to fix these? And number four is who, what, where, when, how do I sell these things mm -hmm. once I've done it? Yeah. Uh, and from a wholesaler point of view, you need to know all of that if you're going to be an effective wholesaler, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because as we discuss all the time, there's a lot of people out here that want to tell you they're real estate investors, but really they're just traders. Right. You know, they're not, they're, they're not investing in anything. They're trading this paper for a little bit more money. They're doing arbitrage or trying to do arbitrage. Exactly. You know. And they don't know what they're doing. And they right. have these conversations. You know, I, I see it all the time. I know you see it all the time. You know, you buy this house for 150000 There's 40000 in renovation. It's worth three fifty. Yeah. And you, you get there and you see it's $140,000 in <laughs> renovation. Right. You know, and you're like, what is this guy thinking about? You know, but they, they have no idea. And like you said. You can't be a, an effective business person without knowing what to do. You got to know your numbers. You got to know the numbers inside the numbers. And you and you said the word you. You have to know the numbers. I had a property for sale uh, through a realtor. He was just, you know, kind of tagging along. He said, "Listen, I want to sell your stuff." I said, "Great." So I listed it with him, and there's this buyer that showed up, and it was a newbie buyer, mm. you know. Because the, the newbie buyer was trying to rely on contractors to give her bids on what it would cost to fix this property. Mm -hmm. So the first bid, and I said, listen, it's going to cost, you know, 30000 35000 This was a fluff and buff. Right, okay? right. Brick, you know, single family, ranch, you know, n not that much to do. So, uh, so her first bid, contractor bid, comes in pretty close to that. And then she got another one that was like sixty thousand, and then she got another one that was one hundred and twenty thousand. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> you know, that's a pretty big spread, that's wouldn't a, you think? Yeah, yeah. Well, these gold toilets came with that now, last package. Right? Uh, no, I'm <laughs> in a, in a seven forty seven. And but, do you think she did anything? She probably walked away. She did. She didn't know what to do. Yeah. She was totally confused. So you, the word is you. You have to understand what these renovation costs are. That's right. And depending on where you're listening or watching uh, from, the costs are going to differ from, from state to state, from region to region. You know, what it cost us to buy something here in, in Atlanta isn't what it's going to cost uh, to buy it in, let's say, San Diego, for instance. Right. So, you know, and I... I give you a perfect example. Um, you know, for us to do a, a really nice kitchen here with a, a tier one granite, nothing super extravagant, but a tier one granite. I mean, we can redo a sizable kitchen from front to back, from beginning to end, right. for somewhere around ten thousand dollars, including appliances. Not depending? not appliances. Oh, okay. not appliance. Just just uh, soft clothes cabinets. You know, modern yeah. uh, granite countertop sink, maybe a farm sink. You know, we're somewhere in, uh, right around ten, eleven thousand dollars, depending on the size of the kitchen. Right now, if we're in San Diego, that exact same material, it's going to cost you about twenty-five, maybe thirty thousand dollars to do that kitchen. Yeah, that's you know, crazy. labor's more, materials cost more, taxes are more. For some reason, the granite costs more. I don't know. I don't Mo know. Motion picture studio <laughs> fee, you know, exactly. I don't know what they exactly. have out there. But it's, it's absolutely uh, on a whole nother level in some areas. So you have to take that into account as we're going through this. So how do you, how do you mitigate that kind of thing? Well, you, you simply go, if you're just looking for material costs to start out, that's easy. You go to homedepot.com, lowes.com, yeah. and you get an idea of what it costs for a door, what it costs for a sink what it costs for a bathtub, a toilet. And now you know what those are. And you can simply 
ask contractors because by this point you've been building your your success team. Can I talk about contractors for a oh, minute? Oh, please do because yeah, we can go on <laughs> and on and on about contractors. So, listen, contractors <laughs> are great, but there are, there are different categories of contractors, and maybe yeah. you know most people don't understand that there are different categories of contractors. So if you open up uh, – I wasn't going to say the yellow pages. But <laughs> <laughs> Stop dating yourself. No, okay, right. So if you open up something that was like the yellow pages, like, you know, retail contractors uh, in your area, they send you the flyers. They, you know, you get your, your vow packs, and they say, oh, we'll do all your windows. You'll rebuild your decks and yeah. all that. And it goes to the Sandy Springs and the Alpharettas and the Mariettas and all that. Well, so those are retail contractor guys. So there's another great tool that people utilize to find these great contractors that, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people that, that you're missing right now. It's, okay. It's called Google. Oh, oh Google. Yeah, Google. Google. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. You know, so you just search it, it? It's replaced the yellow pages. <laughs> okay. FYI. Right, right. right. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> stop, stop picking on me. <laughs> so anyway... The the point was, we're not we're not here to promote Google, but we are here to uh, educate people on that there are different contractors out there, yes. retail contractors, you know, that will replace your gutters with gutter guard and all that, and charge you eight hundred and ninety nine dollars a foot. <laughs> or there's a different contractor, the contractor that are re, the real estate investor friendly yeah. contractor that understands, hey, we're we're trying to get in and we're getting out uh, of these properties and we're, we're not going to bug the heck out of the contractor with multiple changes and indecision on the, on the light fixtures and the granite color. And we're not going to drive them totally nuts, but we want the best price and we want to get them in and out at the best price. So so how do you find them? uh, I I don't know. How do you look for them? Uh, I just know them, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, now I mean, there's definitely a, a referral base that goes on. But one of the things that I did when I was looking for contractors uh, that were investor friendly, because yeah. I knew I wasn't going to be able to find them on Google, right? You know, shameless plug. But um, I just drove around the neighborhoods that were not the high end neighborhoods, because generally you're going to see you're going to get. You know, yeah. if you're in a million-dollar neighborhood and the house is being renovated, they're going to be the top-dollar guys, right? right? So I drove around neighborhoods that were in the middle, you know, in the two to three hundred thousand-dollar price range, where we knew that people were buying these houses for eighty, ninety thousand, and they were probably spending a hundred thousand on the reno to get that, or somewhere in that neighborhood. And I, I just drove those neighborhoods and I looked for projects that were under construction, and I would go in there and meet the contractors. Right. And look at I could look at the work they were doing firsthand. Exactly. To see if we need to have another conversation. You know, and uh I, I did that for a couple months. That's how I found a lot of the folks that that uh that I've worked with over the years. You know, there's another way. Well, pr- pr- I, actually, please I do, do know of one way. Do I do know of one way. <laughs> you can go to real estate investor associations yes. and meet contractors there because they're over there trying to drum up some business you know, for themselves. Absolutely. I used to run one of those. You did a good one, by the way. Oh, thank you. I miss it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, not really. Because I had to run it yeah. and promote it. And, you know, it's a whole nother business. But um, one of the guys that I met from that yeah. is a is a contractor. Yeah. And uh, so we've done, a, we've done quite a few deals together. Yeah. He's come in and done, you know, different things and, and uh, we're going to have him on as a guest in a little bit on the yeah, show. Absolutely. So you know, I'm, just, I'm telling you this now, so you can come up with some questions, you know, for him. So well, I've got a ton of them because we want to surprise him as much as we possibly can. Because <laughs> he said, first thing he said when he walked in, he said, "Well, listen, don't surprise me." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> no, not at all. You know, I think that it's important again that um, the information that's being shared with you about this particular aspect of real estate investing is so vital uh, for people to understand because it's the one thing that uh, comes up all the time, even after negotiating, you know, people will get that, but they're so nervous when they walk into a house and they, they can see that there's a roof that needs to be replaced because it's torn up. But what if it doesn't look torn up? What if it's, you know, just, it, it looks, maybe it's a little discolored 
and they don't know enough. They're new, and they go and they see a stain in the ceiling or, or several stains in the ceiling or damage around the windows. They don't know that that could be coming from the roof. They don't know anything, you know. You know, roofs, I'm glad you mentioned roofs because I just ignored roofs for the first couple of years, man. I just didn't want to deal with I didn't understand them. I didn't know what, I didn't want to deal with them. And uh, that's just the way it was. And, and sometimes I bought houses that really needed a new roof. Yeah. I just, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, but now that's an opportunity. Cause, Absolutely. Because I know there's other people like that were like me when didn't want to deal with the roof. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and mine was foundations. I I didn't want to get down there and look at it at all. Okay, you know. Yeah. I just made the assumption that it was in good shape. And neither one <laughs> are that big of a deal, you know. Now yeah. now that we know, yeah. I mean, you know, it yeah. took a while. Absolutely, it's a process. I just think that you know having Scott with us today is yeah. going to be, uh, I think, a great bonus for a lot of the people that are listening today. Or, or, or watching us a little bit later on. Uh, I and just during know. our seminars, we, we have tools that can help people with the renovation costs, don't we? Absolutely. Like We're the, like the Wholesale Mastermind that. coming up in August. That's right. The Wholesale Mastery. In Mastery. August, August Mastery. 17th. August 17th. August 17th. So yes, we've got sir. that Wholesale Mastermind where we kind of go through some of these things. And we've had contractors help us specifically with the cost of labor when we're talking about the pricing yes. uh, going through these things. But they're tools that you can utilize, but you have to know that there's a difference from region to region. And we can, uh, of course, help and from you. from contractor. Oh, 100%. Yes. But listen, let's take a break. And when we come back, we're going to have Scott Bowen with us. Let's do that. All right. Five-star service. I'm loving it. We'll buy your house. Click 833willbuy.com. That's 833-W-E-L-L-B-U-Y.com. Or call 833willbuy. Se habla español. Llámanos. Call us today. And welcome, welcome back. Welcome back from the break. Uh, we are now going to continue our conversation about this so, so vital aspect of real estate investing, uh, which is understanding your numbers as it relates to the renovation cost and Steve. Yes, you were speaking a little bit about Scott before. Uh, I, I before was. I was speaking about different types of contractors, and that there are contractors that are retail contractors that are going to sell, you know, gutters and deck work and basement redos, and then there's investor-oriented contractors, um, like the one that I met. Oh, I don't know, 19 years ago about or something that, like yeah. that. About that. And what's your name? Scott. Scott Bowen. And what do you do, Scott? Uh, well, we've um, I, I've been a renovator uh, for a long time, and um, we do everything from turnkeys, getting the house ready, uh, to full-on rentals. Stay uh, close to the mic. Okay. And um, so uh, we stay pretty busy. You know? Yeah, I know there, you do. There's a lot going on in the Atlanta area. Absolutely. So now you would consider yourself an investor-oriented or friendly Contractor, is yeah, that correct? Yeah, there's a big difference between like what you were saying the <clears throat> the phone book yeah. uh, <laughs> contractor hey. uh, and the, the folks that are out there in the trenches that really get it. Yeah, uh, folks that are walking the houses with the buyers, whether they're experienced or newbies, because uh, a lot of times they all need a little bit of um, they need you to impart some knowledge so they can really get an idea of what they have if they have something that's not too heavy or if they've got a tiger by the tail. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I got to bring that up because I think that's a, a great a great thing. When you're walking through these properties with the new people, mm -hmm. having done this a few times, <laughs> uh, you know, we can't see everything that's going on with the house. I mean, there may be a, a band that's rotted away that we can't see right away until we get to it. There might be something behind the wall that we can't see until we take that sheetrock out. One of the biggest problems that I've had to deal with as it relates to new investors in particular mm -hmm. is the constant increase in cost because of these, you know, these cost overruns that occur because of things that you couldn't see that were kind of, kind of impossible to see. And they, you know, I think that a lot of them, new investors, that is, believe that, oh, these are things that you should have seen before. What's your take on that? Well, that's a utopian situation, yeah. um, and it doesn't really work that way. Uh, you're exactly right in what you're saying as far as 
you take a look at, at you're the doctor, you take a look at the patient, you see the patient. What you don't see is the X-ray or the MRI, the things that show the inner workings of the house. Yeah. Um, and uh, from the street, you only see what you see. So once you get out, take your time, really walk through, uh, and you're looking at these issues. Uh, a, a simple example might be that the roof looks like it's having an issue. Well, it may be a roof issue, but it could also be a foundation problem mm. that's manifesting itself at the roof, and that's just where you see it. Mm-hmm. So when you're going through taking a look at these things, you need to, um, like, like I'll give someone an approximate figure. Nothing's right down to the dollar, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, and I'll say, you know, here's what we're looking at. Here's a rough guesstimation of what you're, of what we're seeing, and and of course that would also involve the. Th- um, I would would be very clear saying there could be things behind the walls or things that we don't see yet, mm-hmm. uh, and they would need to put a figure in there with their uh, repair uh, estimate so that they can um, kind of be prepared for that. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We've had different situations come up. We had. Uh, uh, one issue come up once with uh, a, a water line. Sure. The, the main, the main water line. Just mm-hmm. once. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or how about the time on that house uh, uh, in uh, Oakland City where there was no water meter? Oh, there, oh yeah, right. <laughs> every <laughs> house in Oakland City, there's you know, well, not every. Yeah, but, but I mean, you know when do you think honestly? You know, and it's not even that you missed it. You know, it's that you don't think that you'd have to look to see if there's a water meter because every house is supposed to have a water meter, right? That's right. So, actually, we we actually found that meter. It, but it was at the neighbor's house. I know. I like, <laughs> but that wasn't the, our meter. Yeah. That was that was there. You know, it was over on the other side. Oh. It took us a month, and the city couldn't find it. Yeah. Anyway, we're here to talk about Scott, though. Well, uh, but on that point, creative yeah, on that on that point, creative yeah. things happen yeah. in the neighborhoods, and they happen from the folks that are right around there. So oh, creative things, what creative things. Well, you know, when you're looking at the house itself, you're looking at the house, the bones, the yard, and the neighborhood too. Because mm-hmm. you know what they say: when you marry the husband or the wife, you marry the family. Yeah. When you buy the house, you buy the neighborhood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So something to pay attention to. That's good. You know, uh, especially on things like uh, how your house is positioned. Maybe what what if you're sitting in a house that is below street grade and the two properties to your left or right are all higher than you? Well, where's all that water going to go? Things like that that you may not be thinking, that the new person might not be thinking about where you guys have, you know, seen it happen a, a lot. Yeah. So. And and when we're when we're doing our walkthroughs, mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> and I tell people on a hundred percent of the time, look, I'm not a contractor, but I've been doing this for a while, so I know to look for certain things, as we spoke in the last segment. I'm not crawling underneath houses, <laughs> right? Right. So I'm just not going to do it. You what are you looking at me you for? Know? Oh man, <laughs> you won't fit under a lot of houses. I'm not you? even going to try. <laughs> you know, I, I'm telling you, there's all kind of stuff under there. I don't want to play around with it, right? And there might not be, but the thought that there could be is enough to keep me outside. Yeah. Right. So I have my, you know, my my level of uh, looking under there is just kneeling mm-hmm. with a light. Mm-hmm. I don't see much. And then I go, I go upstairs and I bounce on the floor a little bit. Okay. Obviously, that is not the best way to determine if there are any significant issues with the floor or the foundation, right? Now I see how you got away with that foundation must be good. Yeah, yeah that's it. I get it. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> when you're doing a thorough inspection, like when someone like us calls you out, an investor says, hey, you know, I really want to buy this house, but I need to know what's going on with it. Mm-hmm. I can see this, but I can't see that. Can you tell me what I can't see? Knowing that you're not going to be able to see things 100%. Yeah. But will are you, or you know, your company, you personally, yeah. for that matter, you're going to throw on your hazmat suit and get under there and check it out? You have to. The only way to see it is to see it. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, the, I mean, I look like a stormtrooper half the time, <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest guy in the world, so I can get in most of those places. Yeah. I don't love it. It's not my favorite part of the job. No. But, you know, if I go down there and I take some pictures, I see what we're really looking at, it makes it so much easier to come out and explain to you, yeah. you know, why that floor is bouncing, you know, or what's going on. Because there's a lot that you just can't see unless you get down there. Absolutely. So you just do it. Now, obviously, we've worked with you. We've done some things for you in the past. One of the, one of the most interesting things 
uh, that I have seen you do is the, uh, the I don't know how you, water treatment when you have a basement oh, or even yeah. a partial basement. Mm-hmm. And when it rains, there's water that comes in. Sure. Uh, because I know, having done this before, that that can be $8,000, $7,000. Again, Googling those guys. Right? What? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Googling those guys because I've done it because I didn't know what to do. I didn't, sure. I had no idea what to do. And uh, you came by one of the properties and you had given us some really good advice on cost-effective ways mm-hmm. to end the problem. You know, and I think your experience level, because of what you've seen, because of what you've done and the time that you had in this industry, uh, could be a great benefit to anyone that needs someone to truly look at a house. Because it takes what? You know, how long does it generally take? It takes take a to, while, yeah. especially depending on, well, it's not just the size of the property. Yeah. It's also the general condition. Yeah. You know, if you're looking at something that has, uh, you know, a few issues, you're relatively quick. But if you get something that's that's problematic, which is kind of where you guys make your money. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're buying a house, you're buying it problems and all, warts and all, as they say. Yeah. So um, As is. As right. is, as right. Is. And, and the more things there are to look at, the more that I have to put it together for you, yeah. you know? So we're really a team when we're doing this sort of thing. Absolutely. Right. Because we have to be, if we're not on the same page, my financing can be affected. A lot. You know, I, I may not, maybe, maybe this was a bad deal and it's, you know, $30,000 more than we expected to spend on the renovation, realistically. Mm-hmm. Good to know, know going in. Absolutely. Because yeah. you can walk away. That's right. Before, and it's worth whatever it costs, you know, you to come out there and give a thorough examination than for me to buy a deal that I'm, you know, sure. I'm going to have to come out of pocket 10, 20, 30 grand. Well, it's really important that you're able to test your systems. Uh, you know, and when I say systems, that's a generic term, but like your roofing system, your plumbing system, your HVAC system, uh, in addition to, you know, what won't blow your deal is a little, tr- is, is the trim on the house. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, the light bulbs aren't working. That's not your, that's not your money. Mm-hmm. Your real money comes into, you know, uh, the whole picture. So that's really what I try to do first time out give everybody a rough estimate of what we're looking at. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, like you said, you know, there may be a little that's sight unseen. Right, right. And then Scott just said uh, he's a team member. And most of the contractors are not on your team. They are the president and CEO sure. of their company, period, end of story. Yeah. And really you want somebody, you know, we talk about building our team. And so you got to have a contractor that understands that mm-hmm. in order to have a good relationship. So that everybody comes out winning. That's right. Because no matter what, if you're working with people, you're on the same team. Your lender's on your team. Your attorney's on your team. Your contractor's on your team. Yeah. And you and you have to really learn how to work with one another and communicate with one another. And that and that starts with having effective people on your team. Wouldn't you agree? I would. I, I'm, it's also important. Like we work in what, what what's called the trades, right? So when we're out there. We're working with the other trades, too, to kind of make sure that everything works. Because if you guys win, we win. Mm-hmm. We get called back. Right. And that's how we do it. So let me ask you, how how can the listeners and people that are watching this, how can they contact you? How do they find you? My name's Scott Bowen. The number is 404-392-0559. And my email is Scott, S-C-O-T-T, underscore New Horizons at yahoo.com i love it yeah i love it i love not how google. You had to think sorry. about it sorry that's it <laughs> you know, all that talk about google yeah that's right well listen scott i want to thank you for coming thank you thank so much you. for being here i appreciate you taking the thank time you, to uh, thank come you guys. And, and share your information with us uh, we're headed to a break right now okay and uh again man really thanks for sharing with us today i appreciate you coming by my pleasure i enjoy you joining thanks so much Do you need to sell your house? Well, our company will buy, will buy your house. We make the process very fast, very easy, and it's all cash. All you have to do is give us a call today. We'll buy your house. Click 833willbuy.com. That's 833-W-E-L-L-B-U-Y.com. Or call 833willbuy. Se habla español, llámanos, call us today. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. We were just sitting here over the break talking about specifically uh, water issues and, and being 
thankful for what? For for water issues <laughs> and more specifically Scott Bowen because, you know, now if I see a water issue, I'm not going to go call the foundation people yeah. and go get one of these drains. And honestly, honestly, the first time I saw it and understood what they actually did, they put this drain inside your basement and they cut a, 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 a strip so that water collects there and then they pump it out with a sump pump. That made no sense to me. Yeah. Why would you do that? I don't want water in my basement, period. Yeah. You know, whether it's getting into this channel and then get pumped out because, hey, things can go wrong. The power might be off and it's raining, you know, lightning strikes. The, the sun pump's not going to come on. That's right. Because the power's off. Yeah, so how do we just keep it out, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now I, I really look for water issues. You know, if I see a water issue or a foundation issue, I love foundation issues. But Scott gave you those solutions. That's why now you know how to kind of kind of mitigate it when you're walking. Exactly. That's exactly where I was going. So I've got this. I had this house, and you know, it rained and water would come in the basement. And so uh, I learned from Scott. I already knew some stuff, and I said, "Hey, Scott, what else do we need to do here?" So he showed me how to solve the problem without digging up the hole all the way down. You know, to the to the foundation because mm -hmm. this was a basement you know so the dirt was covering up that first that whole basement level yeah so the only way to get you know really get there is to dig it out with a backhoe no i don't want to do that yeah. so how do you solve those problems well i know how and it's because of scott he yeah. showed me how to solve that problem and then he said okay once you get that done on the outside you go down into the basement and you do these things and you know a, a typical um Foundation operation is going to charge three, four, five, six thousand dollars. I, I paid six the first time. Okay, <laughs> I paid twenty five hundred. Yeah, for mine the first time. I hired a labor guy to help me on the outside, and then I went and bought this special sealer paint. This guy said you can only get it at one place in Atlanta, <laughs> and it has to be this one. And I said okay, and so my the total cost of that thing was two hundred dollars to wow. fix that. Wow. And now, no water comes in that basement in that house. I mean, I, I, I know the value of working with, with Scott and, and people like Scott, <clears throat> excuse me, because they give you so much information that it doesn't negate them their, the need for them to be there, right. but it does help you evaluate in a, in a much, much more significant way things that you may have just overlooked or assumed were going to cost a lot of money you know, they give you that information. He give, gave gave us that information so that we could really uh, determine what we needed to do and then bring him in when we needed to. So, I mean, uh, yeah, Scott's pretty good. I mean, he's, he's better than pretty good. I love Scott because, I mean, he, he comes in, and, you know, I've been doing this for a few decades. Okay. <laughs> so I've been doing it for a few decades, and I walk through a house, and, and I'm kind of a big picture guy. You know, I'm going to look at, okay, it needs a roof. It needs a kitchen. It needs a bathroom. Da, da, da. Add all those up, usually in my head or, you know, on my fingers. And I, you know, I'm pretty good with math. Just a little. Okay. Yeah. But it's simple math. I mean, you know, anybody <laughs> can do it. But I don't I, – I realized really early on in my career that um, I, I carried this little calculator in my pocket. Yeah. Because I was doing all the formulas and all the numbers, and I said, okay, okay, the house is going to be this. It's going to be – the ARV's that. And it's going to be this. And I got my calculator out, and I did the math, and I did – subtracted the – the cost and I looked at it and one day I said you know if I have to do this with a calculator the numbers are too tight yeah it's just it's this is no deal and and these are pretty simple formulas I can do this in my head but um, I digress a little bit from where I was going with that uh, so I like to get Scott out to the to a property because yes I'm a big picture guy but Scott will go look and say well you know did you see that that eave over there that's crooked and it's kind of rotted, where's the water coming from? I don't know. Mm. I didn't even see that, you mm -hmm. know. Or he'll see something in the basement that, that takes us on a whole nother level. And, and so sometimes they're little minor things, but sometimes they're big issues that, that I've overlooked. Because yeah. being a big picture guy, I'm going to say, okay, let's come up with these numbers and slap another five or 10,000 on it to cover <laughs> the things that I there. didn't see. You know, that's right. <laughs> You know, but there is, 
sometimes you got to do that. That's called your contingency, right? That's right. And uh, that that's going to generally be, you know, 10% of whatever you determine your budget to be. But one of the things that we've created is the ability for the person that is less than a novice to walk into a house and determine what it's going to cost, you know, within reason, uh, what it's going to cost to renovate that house. And they don't have to know anything other than the square footage. You know, I know what you're talking about, and you don't have to be less than a novice because uh, I use that yeah, constantly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it, do I. Tell everybody what it is. So th- there's a form that we created, and it's really simple. Uh, it's an Excel spreadsheet form. You know, we update it every so often uh, to reflect the cost for labor and materials to do a renovation. And if you've got a tablet, or even if you don't have a tablet, and you just have to print them out and walk, walk it and, and write down the information as you walk the property and then come back home and just plug in those numbers into the – it just calculates everything for you. Like, I can tell you that it's – it's going to cost approximately three dollars and fifty square uh, fifty cents per square foot mm-hmm. of that house to uh, replace your roof, roughly. Now, can can it cost more? Yes. Can it cost less? Yes. But this is just giving you an idea of what that is. It's a okay? good estimating tool. Exactly. So, what do they need to know? To what do people need to know? Simply just the square footage. If the house is 1,462 square feet yeah. and you're looking at the roof and you're like, yeah, the roof, I can tell the roof is bad, then you just put 1,462 square, uh, square feet in that quantity column and it gives you a valuation of what it's going to cost for that roof. So it's, it's square footage based, hmm. right? So that's all you need to know. And for gutters, for instance, people are, you know, it's 95 cents per square foot. So it's the same. 1,462 square oh, feet. Oh, that sounds great. You yeah. don't have to get out there and measure the length of the gutter. Yeah, it's not linear. Okay. You know, it's it's calculated in a fashion that really helps people um, who don't know what the cost of these things are and who don't know, you know, what is it going to cost me for, you know, granite countertops. And there's, you know, 42 linear feet there because the way that that's calculated is, you know, the linear, uh, the linear footage. Yes, it's square footage. But it's also the 24 inches there, so you've got to double whatever that is. But you don't have to do that. Right. It's just $185 per linear square foot or per linear foot. Right. You know, and that is it. Then that's labor. That's materials. That's glue. The that's sink. cutting. You know, no, the not the sink. sink. Not the kitchen sink. You that actually this, comes in with the. Cabinetry. This doesn't come with the kitchen sink. It doesn't come with the kitchen sink. It's oh, definitely God. separate. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> separate. But you know, those are the things that people have to know. And, hey, listen, you can just reach out to us uh, if you want to get a copy of that. We don't mind sharing that right now. Uh, right. It's, we give them away at the event for people that come to the event. event. What event? That event, the Wholesale Mastery Course. Okay. Uh, it's, like, it's, it's a two-hour, you know, that two-hour event that we like to talk about. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be on August 17th. It's a from, Saturday. From 10 to 12. Well, I tell people 9.30 because I want them to come and have some of that continental breakfast. Oh, that's right. Not that's right. right. Yeah. I want them to come and eat the fruit and donuts and, and coffee and juice. that's the $5,000 seminar. That's the $20 seminar. We, we gotta and you know what? It's that. not even a seminar, Steve. We can't do that. We just can't do that anymore. It's not even a seminar. Listen, seminars are places that you go and you're sold stuff. As I like to call it, you know, you, you see that free seminar that you see on television and then you go, I call it the free $2,000 seminar because it's another two grand to get your, you know, your three-day event. And then you go to the three-day event, and they're giving you great information, but it's so much information that you cannot possibly absorb it. And then they, they're pitching you at another, you know, another event after that. Well, you know, you're here now. Now you need to have the, the mentoring or you need to have the special sauce service, whatever it is that they have because, you know, there's no secrets to this, really. You know, there's just no secrets. There's just processes. And if you learn the processes and follow the processes, implement the processes, take action, you'll find success. That's it's right. as simple as that. There is no secret. There is no special button to be pressed that's going to tell somebody how to wholesale a property better than the next guy. You know, what's the fastest way for people to learn real estate investing? Is it to to watch YouTube videos? Is it to go to these seminars? It's simply Is to take it action. To read? Take action. What do you mean take you action? You got to get out there and do it. Listen, 
you, people suffer from paralysis of analysis or analysis know, paralysis, right? But don't you need to know uh, every word in the contract? You know, to, if you want to know every word in the contract, you should have went to law school. Okay, it's as simple as that. And if you want to be a lawyer, that's what you do. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't understand your contract, right? But your business isn't law. You hire lawyers. You need them anyway. That's right. Right? Your business is to be a real estate investor. So you're saying just go do it. Just go do yeah, it. Yeah, but what if, I, what if you mess up? You just mess up. And again, as we said before, <laughs> pain is the absolute best teacher you're ever going to have. And if you do not, if you're not making mistakes, you're not doing it right. Bottom line. Right. That, that's just the bottom line. You're no, going you're not to make, doing anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, that too. Okay. If you're not <laughs> making mistakes, too. then you know you're. you're that's not right. Making, although sometimes you might consider not doing anything, making a mistake. That's right. I, I said this to you before. You know, I've done business with people who don't want to do business on a high level with people that haven't lost and, right. and made it back. Exactly. They don't want to do business with people on a high level unless that they've already the gone through pain. A, major financial disaster. <laughs> Absolutely. Pain, right. And then made their way back. Because now you understand the importance of what it is you have in front of you. It doesn't guarantee success. Mm-mm. But what it does do is, is it guarantees you that's th- that whoever it is you're working with has a certain kind of a mindset at that point. Gives you a whole new perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, because pain is painful. It's a good educator. <laughs> it is quite a good educator. <laughs> yeah. And I love it. And there's love only it. one reason we do things. And that's so, so we feel better. Yeah, no one and wants if, to feel. If we're pain. feeling pain, then we're, that's one of the things we probably shouldn't be doing. Yeah, we got to move our way through it. Yeah, and if if you're feeling it, you know you got to do something a little different. So don't spend a bunch of time wallowing in your own misery. <laughs> get out of it. Do something. We got to take a break now. Let's uh, let's do that so we can hurry up and get back and get, deliver some more great information. We'll buy your house. Click 833willbuy.com. That's 833-W-E-L-L-B-U-Y.com. Or call 833willbuy. Se habla español. Llámanos. Call us today. Hello. Welcome back to Real Estate 360, where you t- we take you from the show to the pro. And, of course, we're talking about real estate pro. And, of course... Uh, next to me here is Jason O. Miles. Hello, uh, hello, and thank you for listening. Hello. Yes, Jason O. Miles, <laughs> would you mind telling us uh, more about team building and how important that is? Listen, one of the most important things is your relationships. If you cannot maintain your relationships and develop those relationships, you're going to be that island that no one wants to be. You know, Nobody wants to be the only person that can pay for dinner. Mm-hmm. You know, no, nobody wants because it's a lonely place to be. And it's a place where, you know, you just don't want to be. You just, it's just an ugly place to be. And the only way not to be there is to develop these relationships. Now, as it relates to real estate on, on any level, whether it's single family or multifamily, commercial, you know, the, the circle just gets smaller. The, the more zeros you add to, to a number, Right. The, the circle gets that much smaller, so everyone winds up knowing you. And anybody that's working in real estate right now, you you kind of you know you don't you don't necessarily know everyone, but you know this group, you know that group, you know the people that are making the kinda, moves. In, you kind of know of them. Yeah, you know of them, and th- it just gets smaller as you move up. You wind up knowing these people. So if you're not developing those relationships along the way, yeah, you're you're leaving money on the table. And the team building and the relationships, you know, you'll find that, you know, you might want to bring somebody into your team, but then some the, there may be some friction or something, something doesn't go right, and maybe at some point you've decided that may, maybe you don't want them on your team anymore. Right, right. Or maybe somebody decided they don't want us on our on their team or That's me right. on their team. That's great. That's all fine. Mm-hmm. And, and it doesn't mean that the relationship is damaged. Right. It's just there's a fork in the road. Mm-hmm. We'll find another way to do business sometime down the line. You know, I got a Perhaps. telephone call. If I can just throw this in. Yeah. Uh, I got a telephone call from an agent that I've worked with uh, in the past. And she lives across the street from me as well. Mm. And I'm always telling her, hey, you know, because she has this investment group. Hey, you know, we got to get together. Let me talk to your group. They've invited me. Just haven't inked the date. Um, but she she calls me up. She sends me a text message and says, hey, listen, I got this great property. 
I'd like to partner with you guys. And I already know she does great work. She knows how to recognize the deals. Right. I mean, she's a realtor, but she she absolutely knows how to recognize deals, right? Okay. So she said, hey, here's a great deal. I know that I can get this for X number of dollars. I also know that I'm going to need a little bit of help in one of these two or three different ways. One of those ways is the design um, okay. The design factor. She wants help with the design factor, right? So she's like, "I know you guys do this because I've gotten your marketing material, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> <All right? laughs> and I've seen the work you do. I've seen the stuff you guys have put on um, out there for sale. And I'd really love to partner with you. I mean, this is out of the blue. It's like money from heaven, you know. I mean, it, literally, someone called and said, "Look, I'd like to give you a check." That's what that's what happened this morning. Yeah. And uh, those those are the kinds of things that happen once you've developed relationships. That's right. And it's the only way they happen. When you need a favor sometimes. You know, if we need Scott to go and look, for, look at something for us because we can't get there, yes. he's going to do it before we stroke him a check because, you know, we've developed a relationship with him. Well, I want to diverge a little bit on to what you're talking about because you're talking about abundance. Absolutely. And uh, we, you talked about it a little bit earlier in the previous show, I think. And abundance comes not from out there. It comes from in here. Yes. So if you're fearful of losing money, then the chances are you're going to lose your money. Right. But if you're in an abundance vibrational tone where you believe that the universe just delivers everything to you, and you you know your expectation is that money will just show up because mm-hmm. every now and then you know I'm looking at the account and I think you know I could use a little extra cash <laughs> and uh, uh, sometimes there's extra cash in the account yeah. so you know there's that vibrational tone of a lot of extra cash right mm. so if if I'm ever looking at it and and I see okay maybe I need some more then I just say okay I wonder how the universe is going to deliver me my next you know, fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, or thirty thousand dollars, or whatever the number is, and then I just let that go. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to worry about you know money you know, being there or not being there because that's keeping it away from exactly. Me. <laughs> it's just keeping it, keeping it away because I'm now I'm pushing it away. Yeah. So a man thinketh, totally. You know, so Completely. a man thinketh. If you're you, you listen, uh, your success weighs so heavily on your thinking. On your mindset, you know, it's not just you being able to do a thing really, really well. I mean, how many artists do we know of that are fantastic at what they do? They just don't get the shot. Why? Right? How many chefs are there that are right. fantastic, but they just don't get the shot? How many people work really hard all day long yeah. and then don't make very much money? Exactly. They don't. How many people hardly work and make a ton of money? Right. There's plenty of evidence to support this thing that you call it's oh wow, this is really real. It's a real thing. (laughs) You know, there's people that are fantastic at what they do, and I'm not saying that everyone that makes it is a good person, right? What I am saying is they all do have one thing in common, and that's the way they think about how they move towards what they want. They're all really good. Well, absolutely. There's all good. There's really no bad. That's right. Right? There's really no bad. Yes. There isn't. There's just your perception of whatever's happening to you at any given moment. And then you manifested your realtor from across the street. So That's right. what happened? We're going to go look at a couple. She's actually sent another property. Oh, another one. Another one. You know, uh, so in the same same neighborhood. Yeah. And, I mean, the, this just benefits all of us. You know, a lot of people talk bad about partnerships. A lot of people talk bad about uh, just working in certain ways with other people. Now, we've had a lot of success with that, but in the beginning, it was a little bit difficult. We've had to determine how we were going to do business with other people, and then lay that, you know, lay that down on paper, yeah, so that everybody understands their role in this particular project. And that hasn't, uh, we haven't had any issues with that. And that is, of course, a totally different segment, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of uh, working with partners and things of those those natures. But we've kind of uh, perfected that. I right. think at this point, and we know what we don't want to do. Usually, we know, yeah, we know what we want to do and how we want to do it, 
and we're always open to uh, negotiating very various terms of these partnerships that we wind up being in. But if you can't keep your mind focused on what it is you want to do and where it is you want to go without worry, you can't worry about this not being signed now and that. I mean, it just you you damage relationships. Yeah, you 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 push people away. You never get what you're what you're complaining about. And by the time you do get it, it's out the door that fast if you do get it because of what you've put in there. You have to put yourself in a different mental space to be successful in not just real estate but in life in general. Well, well I've heard, I heard a story. Um, I was actually utilizing some of these you know, new tools like YouTube and Google. Uh, and Welcome. I was, thank you. Welcome. No, <laughs> I've heard about this a long time ago, but, uh, <laughs> so I was watching uh, one of these YouTube videos and this guy asked a question. He says, well, why is it that people have to lose everything before they start making more money? And it's because, uh, you know, they lose the first thing. Maybe it's the boat or, or, or a car or something or some money or something. And so all of a sudden now they start worrying about it and mm-hmm. that worry causes them to lose everything else. Mm-hmm. And then when they get to the point where they don't have anything, they stop worrying. Yeah, because the, the, <laughs> because the only thing to do now is come back up, <laughs> right. right? So the focus then stays there. And uh, and what, what people wind up doing, and you hear this a lot in the real estate and finance community yeah. uh, coming out of that re- recession is what they like to call it, right? right? Uh, you've heard of people losing it all. I mean, they lost their families, they lost their houses, they lost their this, they lost their that, and then they had to come back up and they're 10 times stronger than they were before mm. and every aspect of their life is now different because they're thinking differently right. you know no longer are they most of them are, are are not going after things solely to have stuff you know there's a purpose behind it all now there's a purpose behind the relationships that they build right you know whether they're personal or business there's a different purpose there and uh it, it forces you to think differently all you have to do is remember. <laughs> really remember dig, the pain. <laughs> if you really dig deep, you'll start to realize the relationship between thought, feelings, and matter. Yeah. You know, circumstances don't matter, but state of being matters. Circumstances don't create matter because they are matter. They're already done. It's over yeah. with. But your state of being does create matter. It creates your reality. That's right. And what we're talking about here, everybody, truly is mindset. You know, we can sit here and give you every possible scenario that will allow you to become a gazillionaire in real estate in the next 30 days. No, but over time, yes. But if your mind isn't right, none of this matters. That's right. None of it matters. So, you know, read some good books. Put positive things in you. You know, uh, um, get yourself a mentor, whether it's a physical mentor or a virtual mentor. Virtual mentors being... You know, people that you can go listen to Tony Robbins on YouTube. Where would you to, find a mentor? Like, like Yellow Pages or something? Yes. <laughs> that, under M for mentor? Your mentors can be found in any anywhere. It's just someone that you can get information from. Okay. You know, processes from. Whether you're paying them or not, it doesn't really matter. You just have to make sure that you've got someone on your side that can give you the information that's necessary for you to succeed and keep you in the mental space, or at least put you in the mental space that you need to be at to find success, maintain success, and grow in success. You know, read Napoleon Hill. You know, uh, there's a host of other things that you can read, but like I said, as a man thinketh, you need to put yourself there in order to have and maintain and grow success. Yes, it's all about the mind. mind. That's right. So, Steve... We want to thank you for listening and watching the Real Estate 360 Show. Steve Connolly. And Jason Miles. Taking you from the show to the pro. Thank you for your day.